All right, so what's up, y'all? Um, uh, I wanted to make this video about a uh, dream that I had, and it was, uh, I believe it was more than just a dream. Um, I believe it was an actual encounter that I had, and it was uh, things that I saw that were very, very terrifying. And uh, I've been feeling convicted to make this for a while. Uh, so I'm, I'm being obedient to God. So y'all bear with me. I want to just jump straight into it. So I had this dream. This was like 20 something years ago. And it was, I have a lot of dreams like everybody else, I'm sure. Most of them I forget. But this is one of those ones uh, that has been etched in my memory for more than two decades. So I had went home to uh, take a nap. It was in the middle of the day. And I, uh, it was a bright sunny day, I remember. I went home to take a nap and uh, I laid down. And for some reason I was just very exhausted. So I went home, I laid down and take, took a nap and began to dream. And when I woke up, I woke up in my dream. Okay, so in the dream, I was in my old college dormitory. It was like a high rise dorm, eight stories. I don't know, I just knew that that's where it was. That's where it felt like it was anyway. Where it was designed to look like it was. So instead of the beds being in the rooms, the beds were all lined up down the hallway. As far as I could see, into it faded into darkness. So uh, I remember waking up and sitting up in the bed and I'm rubbing my eyes, you know, like you do when you first wake up. So I look to my left and I see these two sets of eyes that are glowing in this darkness. And I'm like, what in the world? So I start rubbing my face again. And when I looked again, it was what appeared to be fallen angels. And perhaps they were, I don't know, but I'll give you the best description that I can. They were very tall, at least 10, 12 feet tall, at least. Uh, very grotesque. You could see angel, uh, you could see uh, wings coming up off, off of their backs, but there was decayed flesh all over them. Even you could see their rib cage were exposed where there was like this decayed flesh hanging off of it. They had very long and sharp uh, claws and talons on their feet. They were very fearsome looking. When I saw that, I began to tremble with fear. And I've never in my life, I've seen all sorts of scary stuff. Scary movies, scary experiences I've had, things that even brought me close to death. Let me tell you something. The fear that I felt in that moment was beyond uh, anything that I think you can experience on the earth. I don't think that's possible to simulate that. It was so much that I was paralyzed with fear that I could not move. And I began to tremble in a dream, but I could feel my actual physical body in my bed, trembling in the bed while I was asleep. So I... uh. I looked again and they were on the guy in the that was one bed over from me and they were at a supernatural rate of speed they were ripping and tearing away at his body it was it was now remember it was like they were zooming and moving all around him just tearing him apart and uh it was tormenting and I'm trembling and and I I couldn't even scream I I just sat there just paralyzed, you know, you can say you'll do this and say you'll do that in certain situations, but in this situation, there was no, um, there was nothing that you could do. So I look again and one of them has the, the guy's body over his shoulder and they begin to walk back towards the darkness. And before they disappeared, the other one, he turned around and pointed at me, at me like that directly. And it was as if he was saying, you're next. 
and uh, I got up out of my what what was appeared to be a bed. I'm almost certain nobody's in hell getting a good night's sleep. I got up out of that whatever that was a bed, and I hit what was an elevator. I was on the top floor, the eighth floor. I hit the elevator when I went down. When the elevators parted open, I saw a dead grass, you know, like if you lay something across the grass and how it gets yellow and, and all dead and brown, or whatever it is, it, it's just dead. It was just a plain, a, a large plain, flatlands of just dead of nothingness. It was an overcast, there was no sun. It was just like gray clouds, but it was enough where I could see what was going on? When the doors opened, I saw groups of people spaced apart, different groups of people, maybe seven, eight, nine in, in, in each group. In this group, I don't know. I just knew. In this group, it was people who fornicated. In this group, it was people who drugs, alcohol, uh, uh, different perversions, different things. And beyond those groups in the back, I saw a figure that was in all white who had his hands lifted up like this here. And I, uh, each one of those groups represented um, the things that at that time I was in bondage to. This was before I had given my life to Christ. Okay, I had a form of godliness. I had been raised in church. I was raised Catholic. I had did all of the, the Catholic, you know, procedures, whatnot, traditions, and so on and so forth. My father was, was Catholic, and that was the religion that I went into. My mother, who happened to be Baptist, I was able to also go to the Baptist denomination and experience what that was like as well. And that's a whole nother video for me to get into about that. But, whew. So, each one of those groups represented what I was struggling with at that time. And uh, it was, uh, that was the end of the dream I woke up. When I woke up, listen, when I woke up, it was as if somebody had came in the room while I was asleep and took a bucket of water, like a mop bucket or something like that, filled with water, and dumped it on me, on my chest. When I woke up, and I am not exaggerating, my entire chest and all this area was drenched in sweat. I was sweating so bad uh, that it was, uh, it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable the, the impact that that dream had. And... Uh, what I'll do here in a minute is give you the different revelations that over the course of time, as I've given my life to Jesus Christ and repented and put my trust and faith in him, the revelations that came to me. All right. Questions? No. Yes. Okay, so these are revelations, and you got to ask questions now. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to edit all that out of there. Don't worry about that. I'll clip and chop. Okay, so these are revelations that I got. These are revelations that I got from this dream. All right, number one, I was in hell. I was in hell. Hell is, and I've heard this from more than one person, people that have had testimonies, people that have that uh, there are so many NDE, near-death experience testimonies, whether it's dreams or open visions or people have died in a, you know, accidents or sickness and have been resuscitated and brought back to their bodies. Whatever it is, or God himself or Jesus himself took them into the spirit realm, showed them heaven, showed them hell. There have been many people who have gone to hell and said that hell is, hell is more than just fire. It's more than just being burned and tormented with flames. Hell is... That Satan has had thousands of years to come up with ways to torment human souls, human spirits. So there are many ways that the devil has uh, 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 created, created of evil and wicked inventions. 
that the enemy has come up with. Be careful of people on the earth that come up with evil and wicked inventions because their inspiration comes from hell. It was custom designed for the things that I was struggling with at that time, the torments and situations that I would have experienced. I believe the Lord was showing me what I would have gone through, would have experienced in the first part of that dream. Uh, I would have been tormented by demons personally. They would have personally tormented me. They would have personally came to, to uh, rip away at my supernatural body that cannot die because it's eternal. Okay, You're, this body dies, this natural body of sin that we're in now, it dies, it perishes. But when you cross over to the spirit realm, you get a new body, a glorified body that does not perish anymore. That's why it's so important that you repent and you trust in Jesus and accept him as your savior and your Lord now while there's time. I did not speak to anybody else that was there. There was no hanging out and fellowshipping and talking and, and any of that thing. I did not speak to one person. I do remember just knowing things without having to be told anything. It was like it was just immediate understanding without having to question or open my mouth to question anything. Uh, matter of fact, I don't even remember actually opening my mouth to say anything. It was more of observation than it was anything else. The fear was literally paralyzing. Like I could not move, even if I wanted to. And the thought of running away was blocked even from my mind. It was as if either one I was supposed to see which I know God allowed me to have that dream I was supposed to see that but number two it was it was as if that fear blocked any type of uh idea of escaping this like you you are here and this is this is your this is your punishment this is your lot this is what it is so each one of those groups like I said when the elevator opened each one of those groups represents represented um, the predominant scenes that were in my life at that time. And I just knew what they were. I just knew what they were. Uh, they weren't doing those acts, but they were separated in accordance to whatever that sin was. And I've, I've, I remember different testimonies. I do a lot of research and y'all I get on YouTube, I read online. Because I don't want to be ignorant of Satan's devices and I want to be in a position where uh, I can get understanding even from other people's testimony. I've had my own and it's different revelations and visions that, that I'll go to in, in other videos that God has given me over the course of years. But let me tell you, I, 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 hell is a real place and there are people who are there. They are being tormented right now while I'm making this video. It is a very real place and it is a very broad road that, that will lead you there. All you got to do is just keep living the way you live in, separated from God. That's all you got to do. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. The figure that was in white. The figure that was in white. So let me give you the, the revelation that I got on that. The figure that was in white. So my, my initial thoughts at that time was... Hey man, that must be Jesus. I gotta go through, you know, each one of these sins. I gotta, I gotta get past these sins in order for me to get to Jesus. Oh no, 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 no. That's not how that works. That's not how that works. If you could save yourself, you wouldn't need Jesus. You wouldn't need him at all, and he would not have needed to come down here and sacrifice himself, a perfect sacrifice for the sins of mankind. So what it was. After I'd given my life to the Lord and I inquired of that dream, I asked the Lord, what was that? Was what? I said, that must be Jesus. And God revealed to me, he said, that was not me. He said, that was Satan. He said that everything you were doing, each one of those sins, you were enabling Satan to lift his hands and be glorified amidst your sin, amongst the sins you were committing at, at that time. And uh, that was a mind-blowing revelation in itself because, like I said, the figure had on white. He looked glorious. He looked uh, very attractive, okay, very attractive. I didn't see a man 
with a pitchfork and red horns and a tail. That's not how he came. And the Bible describes how Satan can come and make himself appear as an angel of light, uh, you know, very crafty. He's very crafty. He's very subtle. He's just like the serpent in the garden. Very subtle, very cunning, very slick. And he knows how to prey on mankind. He knows what to tell you. He knows He knows how to tempt your flesh. He knows how to play with your emotions. He knows how to lead you into darkness. He knows how to ensnare you over long periods of time. Because he's got a lot of time on his hands to do this long periods of time to systematically break us down to the point where we yield and we give in to sin. That's why it's important to walk very closely with the Lord, very closely with him. Church does not save your soul. Church does not save people's souls. Repentance, trusting in Jesus, being washed in the blood, being sorrowful for your sin. Sin has separated us from God. That is what saves your soul. And walking with him, many will say in that day, Lord, and we do all these wonderful works in your name. And the worst thing you could ever hear in your entire life is for Jesus to tell you to depart from me. I never knew you, you worker of lawlessness. That will be the most horrifying experience that a person can have in their life. Trust in Jesus. Give him your life, every part of it. Sell out and commit yourself to the Lord. Don't halfway do it. Give your life to him. That's what he desires. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. There was a song a while ago that came out, and I remember hearing that song, and even in my youthfulness as a believer. I guess you could say youthfulness. I'd been saved for a while, but it was a song called Yes by Shekinah Glory Ministries. Yes. And the song has the words, will your heart and soul say yes? Will your spirit still say yes? If I told you what I really need, will you still say yes? I'm trying to remember the words. There is more that I require of thee. If I told you what I really needed, that's the part that would get me. That's the part now that I'm just now, I gave my life to the Lord and I set this date and I got genuinely converted. I had to grow like anybody, but I was born again. I got converted. It was July 30th of 2000. I gave my life to Jesus. I was a young man. I was a wretched mess and full of all manner of wickedness and evil and sinfulness. And the only reason that I'm not that way now is because of Jesus, because without him, I'm still a wretched mess full of all manner of evil and sinfulness and wickedness. This body is still here, but now I have a new nature that Christ gave me, that Holy Spirit is inside of me, allows me to fight against and resist that sinful nature. It's still there. I haven't forgot. I ain't forgot how to cuss, fuss, fight, and all manner of other things. I haven't forgot that. I know what that's like. But the Lord has changed my heart. He's given me a heart of flesh. Now he's removed that stony, hard woundedness, and he's given me a heart of flesh that that allows me to, to carry on in him. and But hey, I, I still have to do the work. You can't get saved and just sit back and just do as you want to do. You have to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Right? How many minutes I'm going on now? 19. Okay, not bad. So anyway, uh, Jesus is real, y'all. He's real. Uh, I know. Like, I'm fully converted. It's, it's nothing you could tell me that will make me believe the Lord ain't real. It's not, a, it's not a word you could say. It's not nothing you could shoot at me. It's not in any form of deception that you could bring my way to make me feel like that he's not real. He is a very real, true, and living God. He is the Lord of my life and of my family's life. I've made sure to teach my my, my children, my wife, my kids, we love the Lord and we are pressing on. We're not perfect. Lord knows we are not perfect. We have work 
a work, we are works in progress as we all are. But you have to try and you have to try with a sincere heart. The Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It is important that you learn and know what it means to fear God, to reverence him as being holy and just. And in him there is, he is God is light and in him there is no darkness at all or shadow of turning. He is the, he is pure fire. He's a God of fire and, and cleansing and he's holy and he desires that from us. He desires that from us. Be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. He desires that from us. Now, he knows we can't do it on our own. We are a mess apart from him. Jesus said, I'm the, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Apart from him, we can do nothing. We are, with God, all things are possible. All things are possible even. Now, listen, are you still going to sin? Of course you are. Do you have to practice habitual sinning? No, you do not. You do not. Habitual sin sends you to hell. Habitual sins, even as a believer, as a Christian, you can get caught up into habitual sins and they will send you to hell. You will go to hell for that. All right. I know some people believe once saved, always saved, but there are so many scriptures that point to that not being true. You can have your name blotted out of the book of life. So you have to work out your salvation. We're not saved by works, but you still got to put in the work because faith without works is dead. You got to put the work in to show that you are a believer in Christ. Show your faith by your works. Right? Your salvation doesn't come alone based off works. If that was the case, we'd all be in trouble because our bad works and our evil would, would cancel out every good work we've ever had. I couldn't do enough good works to try and overtake the evil ones that I've committed in my past and, and, and that I'll probably commit today or tomorrow. I'm not an evil or wicked person, but I'm just saying the sinful nature it doesn't go anywhere. The thoughts, some thoughts alone. Ooh, aren't you glad God doesn't allow your thoughts to be heard by everybody? Some thoughts alone can get you in a lot of trouble, right? So I don't want to be long. I'm already at 20 minutes or whatever. So uh, I, I hope this video blessed you guys. Um, leave a comment, please. Subscribe. I'm, 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 I'm going to be obedient to God and just start putting out more and more material because I have some pretty powerful visions and, and revelations that God has given me. So I'm excited about this. This is my first video like this, and I hope you guys are, 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 are enjoying it, and I hope it blesses somebody, uh, even to the point of repentance and just turning, turning towards Jesus and away from sin as, as best you can. Fight the good fight and endure until the end. That's the people who will be saved. You have to endure, not just repeating a sinner's prayer. A sinner's prayer won't save you. You have to be converted and changed. So many false converts because they repeated a prayer at the altar. That's not going to get you into heaven. You have to be converted. He told uh, Peter, when you're fully converted, go and strengthen your brothers. But it's a process of conversion and growth. Yes, he'll use you along the way. We are works in progress. But let me tell you something. If you think just because you repeated some prayer somewhere at some altar or, or over television, you're good now. You better check yourself. Before you wreck yourself, you better check yourself. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. God is very serious. Jesus paid a very, very steep price for your salvation. It's worth you doing your part. He's paid. He paid it all. He's done his part. But you got to do yours. You got to do yours now. And listen, I didn't make up the rules. God did. He can do whatever he wants. He's sovereign. He's a king. You don't like it. Oh, man, I don't want to have to do all that. It doesn't take all that. Well, you keep playing that game. You and the devil slow dragging and dancing with each other. Let me tell you something. You fall for Satan's lies, you'll end up in hell for eternity. 
for eternity. And then when they're done with hell, you and everybody else in it, including Satan and all the demons and imps and fallen angels and everybody else will be cast into a lake of fire. It is a real thing. Okay? God bless y'all. I love y'all. I'm out.